You are listening to The Darker Sides of Life, a podcast by Hexakemi. Hello, and welcome to the final episode of The Darker Sides of Life, for now at least. I'm your host, Camilla, and you may also know me from my Instagram, which is Hexakemi, or from my website, which is hexacami.com. No matter the case, I'm here today to give you five tips on how to grieve. This is both for the grievers themselves, but also for the people who know someone who are grieving. Because how do we grieve? How can we make time for it? Should we even do that? And how can we as friends and family support and help a grieving person? Before I jump into the episode, I want to say some things. First of all, Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. At the moment of recording this final episode, there are more than 2,000 downloads of the podcast, which to me is incredible. I did this show because I wanted to do it. It's not the type of content I usually do, so doing it was kind of a leap of faith, if we can call it that. If you have listened to the previous 11 episodes, then you know by now that my own life has been one filled with encounters with the darker sides of life. I've lost my mum at an early age. I grew up with a sociopathic father and a narcissistic sister. The grandma who gave me light and love died of old age in 2016. I'm now alone, family-wise, in a blood relation way of looking at family. I have had troubles getting and maintaining friendships in my life because of my story since it has forced me to view many things in life in a different light. I still struggle with friendships. I still mourn the family I never got to have. I still sometimes wish things would have been different. And then again... I have a wonderful supportive husband. I created an Instagram page in the beginning of the pandemic that has grown into a lovely community. And just last week, I decided that this is something I want to actually try and make into a paying job for me. So I will be teaching myself how to start as an influencer in the sense that I will start looking for collaborations and such to continue the community in a sense that is also sustainable for me to do economically. And I think that things in my life have led up to this So in that way, I cannot imagine trading it away. I'm content with my life as it is now. I'm happy and free and loved. And that's all I think we can hope for in life. It's from this point of view, the view of having gone through the darkest of dark times in life, I created this podcast. I want to help others who are in the darker sides of life now. I want to be the person that I needed myself back when I had it the worst. And I want to thank you for listening to me. I appreciate all the DMs, the emails, the messages in Kofi, the donations you have given me in the podcast through Kofi. It warms my heart to see that to some of you, this podcast is exactly that. A helping friend through rough times, a guide, another way of looking at things, a small light in the dark. This episode is, as I said, the final one for now. If you want me to continue the podcast and do another season, then I need your help. I set up a goal on my Kofi page for 100 US dollars, and if I reach that, then I will do another season. The money will go towards the podcast hosting service I have to pay every month to put out episodes. It's $12 a month, so the $100 won't cover it all, but I set the goal for that to practice charging for my time. If you want to have more episodes and more of my voice in your ears once a week, then donate on my Kofi. There's a link in the description box. I would also love it if you would share the podcast with your friends. If you do any of this, then thank you. Thank you very much. Now, let's get into the episode. How can we grieve? I have gathered five tips for grieving that have worked for me. They still work for me. They work for the people who I have shared them with around me in my real life. And I hope they will work for you too. Remember, I am not a medical professional, and if you need help, then please go to a professional. I can only share my human experience and ways that helped me. I want to start today's episode with a quote I've always enjoyed very much when it comes to grief. It's from Winnie the Pooh, and while those quotes may be a bit overused, I still enjoy them because the one I miss the most, my grandma, collected Winnie the Pooh books in every language she could get her hands on, so I'm very connected to that silly old bear. The quote is this. And now I'm going to try and say it without crying, so here we go. How lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. I feel like there's a very natural separation of people when it comes to grief. One group has never experienced it, and the other one has. I belong in the latter group, and while I completely understand the very concept of grief can be rather abstract for those who haven't experienced it themselves, I still enjoy talking about it with exactly that group. 
I think grief and sadness should be topics we can talk about like we talk about happiness and joy. Because even though the feelings we feel when we are mourning and grieving are often intense, they aren't contagious, nor are they dangerous. To me, the real beauty is to be able to share the loss and grief with the people around me so that the solitude that often accompanies the sad parts of life can be diminished. So now the real question remains. If we are to try and initiate a proper conversation about grief, then how do we do that? I have some suggestions for that. These are from my own personal experience on either side of the conversation, because while I of course have a very personal relationship with my own grief, I do not have that with the grief of others. I like to say that all grievers speak the same language, but we each have our own dialect. Whether you have a dialect or not, I hope these tips can maybe help you to start a conversation, or at least have a better grip on what to do, if a loved one near you wants to have this conversation. Here are five tips to deal with. With grief. The first tip I want to share is to remember there is no wrong thing to say. I feel like it's very standardized to believe that it's better not to speak at all because one might say something that makes it worse. But let me tell you now, there is very rarely something you could say to make grief worse. The grief is horrendous and by keeping it silent or perhaps ignoring it doesn't make it better. It doesn't make it disappear. It's quite the contrary. So if you see someone grieving then you could try saying stuff like How are you doing? I can see you are struggling. Do you need to talk? We can also just sit here in silence. My friend asked me this some weeks ago, whether it was okay to ask me things about the ones I am grieving, how the grief feels, etc. And I was so happy she did, because this creates a space where honesty is present, where I can say yes and no depending on my mood, and she feels comfortable knowing that she's not overstepping, nor is she making me sad. If I am to cry when she asks, it's not because she asked. It's because grief makes us cry sometimes. And we had the most lovely chat about this. So again, tip number one is to know, if you have a friend who's grieving, then that doesn't mean the reason for why they are grieving is to be silenced. Be gentle. Ask. Show you care and think about them. Ask for details that the dead person had. Did they like a specific type of flower? What was their favorite song? Little things like this keeps the memories alive and it gives you the opportunity to send your friend those specific flowers on their birthday, for example. If it's you who are grieving, then consider sharing these details with people around you. Let them know that you would like to eat the pie your lost one loved every year on the anniversary of their death. Tell them that your lost one enjoyed this or that and share if you would like to do something like it to honor and remember them. They say it takes a village to raise a child. I say it takes a village to mourn the dead as well. My second tip is to create regular mourning sessions. If you are experiencing grief and don't know what to do about it, then doing something again and again can be your friend. When I lost my mom, I would spend every day after school sitting by her grave and talking to her. When I lost my grandma, I started regularly cooking the food she used to cook for me. I would do these things as if I had an appointment with the person I lost, so I would remember to do it. You could put it in your calendar, for example, and depending on where you are in your grief, you can do it as often or as rarely as you like. I am past the 21-year mark since my mother died, and this to me means that I don't need to visit her grave as often as I did when she had just passed. So now I maybe visit it once a year, and that's okay. I remember and honor her in other ways, but I do take time to remember that I need to remember her. This is very important. Just the other day I cleared my local charity shop for sewing magazines from the 70s and 80s that for some reason made me think of her. I did not plan to do this, but these moments of random connection with our dead ones should be, if you ask me, welcomed with open arms. My third tip to deal with grief is to write letters to your loved ones. I know from my own life that hitting those big life marks was difficult to do without a parent. So I wrote my mum and grandma a letter. This can be done physically or just mentally if you prefer. When I got married, I did this. When I got my master's degree, I did it. It gives me the opportunity to share updates with them like I would have if they were still here. I sometimes will also ask them what they think of this and that. How would they solve my current problem? What would they think of this new thing I'm trying out? By actively letting them join my life, I keep them alive within me. I go on trips sometimes with them in mind. I know they loved a specific place, so I go there and take them with me in my heart. It's like they are the dead tourist in my life, and I am the guide. 
I break the veil between the living and dead and share what I can from my side. And then sometimes, just sometimes, I get a whiff of my grandma's scent in the air. I see fat bumblebees in lavender bushes and know it's my mum saying hello. I find a blouse in a thrift shop by a brand my grandma loved, but is rare to find. I eat some food I haven't done in years and suddenly realise it was their favourite whilst eating it. So they show me their side too. It is an organic relationship where we both give to the other, even though I am alive and they are not. My fourth tip is mainly for those who are next of kin to a person grieving. When someone is dealing with loss, sometimes the everyday parts of life get neglected. If you see this, then try and do this for the person who's grieving. Are they not eating regularly? Make them some food in portion sizes and put it in their fridge or freezer. Are they isolating at home? Show up and take them for a walk once a week. Are they not calling or texting you like they used to do? Call them. Text them. If they don't answer or pick up, just keep going. A call once a week, a text to say good morning. It really makes a difference and makes the grieving person know that they are not alone. You can put it in your calendar when the loved one had a birthday, when they passed, etc. And then you can wish them a happy birthday. Let your friend know you are thinking of them on this day when the loved one died. It truly makes a difference. When I was in high school, I got my first boyfriend ever. And on February 25th, which is the death day of my mum, I didn't go to school one year. It's a sacred day. And then in the afternoon, there was a knock on my door. And outside stood a local florist with a big bouquet of flowers and a card written by him that said, I'm so sorry, I'm thinking of you today. We were 16 years old and I still cherish this memory, which goes to show that these actions of love and care mean the world to the grieving person. They truly do. My last tip is to remember that grief changes. I think of it as waves. Sometimes they are super high and uncontrollable and I feel like I am drowning. Other times they are still and I am standing in a creek. And when I think of grief like this, I know that since I cannot predict what kind of water I may find myself in, it's wise of me to keep a float near at all times, just in case. My personal float is my rituals I shared in tip number two. I know that by regulating my morning sessions to fit the water I am in can help me make the waters more still. So I cook more of my grandma's food. I sing more of the songs my mum listened to. I watch more movies they both enjoyed. And I know that when there is rough waters, I actually do know how to swim. It may not be pleasant to swim in such a storm, but I will not drown. I refuse to drown. I come up for air and take deep breaths. And I know that all storms will end and then it will be okay. And if it's not okay, then it's simply just not the end yet. These were the five tips I wanted to share with you in this final episode of The Darker Sides of Life on how to deal with with grief. I'm curious to know what you think about them and if you use any of them in your way of dealing with grief in or around you. Thank you for listening to these 12 episodes. I hope they have given you some comfort in knowing that the dark times you may be experiencing can get lighter and that you are not the first nor the last to feel and experience whatever you are feeling and thinking. I know I myself used to feel so very alone for many years in regards to this stuff and I really hope this podcast can serve as a testimonial to prove that it is not the case. Not for me back then, not for you now. I will end this series with another A.A. A. Milne poem because he created Winnie the Pooh and that little bear is the embodiment of my love for my grandma. This one is from the book called When We Were Very Young and I read this book to my grandma often as a child, doing some poems each day to practice my reading skills. It goes like this and it's called The Mirror. Between the woods, the afternoon, it's fallen in a golden swoon. The sun looks down from quiet skies to where a quiet water lies and silent trees stoop down to the trees and there I saw a white swan make another white swan in the lake. And breast to breast, both motionless, they waited for the wind's caress, and all the water was at ease. Thank you for listening. Take care, and remember, you are never alone in the darker sides of life. I hope to see you in a second season. You've been listening to The Darker Sides of Life, a podcast by Hexacami.